Welcome to Lesson 4 in the Tigli training course. We'll be covering caching. Here's the um, Twitter app we created in a previous lesson. As you can see, you click on usernames and it loads tweets related to that username and does the same thing for hashtags too. But one feature of this is that um, even if you've recently clicked on a username like TechCrunch, it's going to always go back to the server to reload. So in this kind of case, it really makes a lot of sense to add an application cache so that when we click again um, for something we've already retrieved, it'll check the cache first to see if it can use that instead. So let's do this. We need to go to the startup screen, to the events, and we're interested in the event onload of the startup screen where it runs a little JavaScript. And I, that's the um, very first line. So let's zip over here and edit the JavaScript that it runs. First, let's get rid of the lines for calling the Twitter search service in here. And we're going to replace them with a call to our method that we're going to write in the helpers for performing the Twitter search. Let's apply the changes. Since we're using helper methods now to invoke the web service, we don't need the events that were for invoking the service, so we'll get rid of both of them. Now let's add in an event for clicking on the search button. We'll add some JavaScript now so that it um, uses the helper method that we created without uh, an actual parameter. We have one more thing to set up before we get down to actually writing the JavaScript helpers. Um, we have to go to the data tab and we want to select the Twitter search service well, on success. We want it to run a JavaScript which is um, for saving our data from the web service to the cache. Okay, let's add our JavaScript helpers now. We'll go to the helpers file and first we'll start with um, the perform search method. It'll take a single parameter called query. There we go. Um, in case it's empty, we'll retrieve the query value um, from the search field using a TIGSY helper method. And then we'll move on to adding a simple condition if the query exists. We'll populate it to its field value. Otherwise, we use the field value as a query parameter. There we go. And we also need to um, scroll the screen to the very top when we perform the search. So we'll use this from jQuery Mobile. And here at, on this line, we retrieve the cached value using our query parameter. If the cache value exists, we call the Twitter search service's um, update components method using its data from the cache. Otherwise, if there is no um, cached value, we just execute the Twitter web service in the way we normally do. Next, let's create the getCache method, which will basically return the global storage. Uh, for this lesson, we are going to use just a global variable called underscore TWCache. So here we ensure that it exists, otherwise it will be an empty object, and we return it. Next, we're going to create the getCached method. It'll return the cached value if it exists. So we first we pull the whole cache. Then we just grab the um, cached entry for the specific query that was passed to this function. 
Next, we um, set up a conditional. If the cached entry exists and its timestamp is um, less than one minute from the current timestamp, then we'll return it. Otherwise, we return null. And now there's one more method that we have to do. The setCached method is used as part of the success event for the Twitter search service. It takes one parameter, data. Here we're pulling all the cached entries. Next we have to do some um, decoding of the data query parameters because of the way that Twitter returns them. And finally, we add a new cache entry, a new cache entry with the query key, which includes the data field and a stamp field, which is the current timestamp. One last detail that we have to take care of is lower casing the query parameters. Twitter is not case sensitive, so we'll do it in the get cached method and also in the set cached method. Now comes the proof. Let's go back to the preview, select TechCrunch, uh, go to some username, and then go back to TechCrunch. There. See? Almost instantaneous. Now, of course, if you waited a minute to go back to TechCrunch from the last time you went to TechCrunch, there should, it should go back to the uh, web service. But we're not going to wait a minute. Take my word for it. Thanks for watching.